Up in Sinks Canyon, there are some petroglyphs up there that uh, depict bighorn sheep that have been dated at, at around 6,000 years old. So bighorn sheep have had a major presence in the Wind River Mountains at least since the last ice age. Even when early settlers moved into to this area, they report that bighorn sheep were impressively abundant in the mountains behind Lander. If we look at the history of sheep across the West, and, and including southern Canada, we had about 1.5 to 2 million sheep estimated. Then in the late 1800s, early 1900s, we had domestic sheep come into the area. Because of disease transmission, those numbers dropped to about 25,000 was all. That's kind of what happened across the West. It wasn't until the early 1960s that some residents in town talked to the Game and Fish Department about getting bighorn sheep back into the area. So uh, they brought some bighorn sheep down from Whiskey Mountain up in Dubois and started to repopulate uh, uh, Sinks Canyon and other areas uh, along the Wind River frontier. And that continued into the 80s. At that point in time, a pretty thriving herd uh, existed of bighorn sheep. Unfortunately, in 1992, there was a gentleman that lived uh, near Sinks Canyon. He and his wife brought uh, 15 or so domestic sheep into their property there. And they only had them for four months, but in that four month period, there was some commingling between bighorn sheep and domestic sheep, and some pneumonia causing bacteria were passed to the bighorn sheep. Within a couple of years, uh, bighorn sheep had just virtually disappeared again. And of course, we all know that Bam Bam was the very last bighorn sheep that was alive in Sinks Canyon, and he'd butt people and he chased cars and whatnot, and he got himself in trouble. For safety reasons, his and, and people, um, the Game and Fish Department uh, removed him to the Sabeel Big Game Research Station, and he died, I think, in uh, 2013, and his body now is back up in Sinks Canyon, mounted uh, in the visitor center at the state park. We're looking at information and some other alternatives now that uh, will hopefully uh, enable us to find a good pathway to restore the population along the entire Wind River Front. We look at several projects per year, and this was one of the projects that came in for funding. We've raised about $42,000 in the last couple years just for the Temple Peak herd and to capture the sheep that we have recently. Uh, and of course, the funds are used for the radio collars, the capturing themselves. The most expensive part is the helicopter. This is the second year of deployment of collars here, and we've got some movement data from last year that showed some of the bighorn sheep from this area spending time up near the Cirque of the Towers. Some of the others went into higher country on the reservation in the Bull Lake Creek drainage. Some stayed pretty much right where they were when we caught them last February. And certainly we're gonna to need to see where some of these bighorns that are being collared today move to, uh, try to figure out suitability of migrations from places where we don't even have bighorn sheep right now, like in Sinks Canyon or the Little Papoja Canyon. If those uh, bighorn sheep were released there, do they have the ability to even get to the high country with habitat conditions between the, the alpine tundra and the, the low elevation winter ranges? A lot of those collars will stay on for several years until they either drop off or the battery dies. They either have the information stored on board or they can actually upload that information to a satellite which you can then download uh, within a day. So a lot of the samples that are collected, blood samples, uh, a lot of the biological samples, we'll actually send them up to the state vet lab uh, in Laramie and they'll go ahead and, and do tests for that and, and run genetic tests and, and look for any diseases that they might find. Right now we cannot do any transplants from any other herds within the state of Wyoming or, or other states unless they're pretty well disease free. We'll see exactly what kind of um, diseases they have and that will determine whether we can transplant other sheep in there because we do not want to be introducing any other diseases to the existing sheep. It'll take some time to get the results back from all that uh, pathology testing. I mean I think it's it's really important that you know states like Wyoming and, and a lot of the other states across uh, the, the Intermountain West especially have cooperative wildlife research units. 
And I think it's important that, you know, not only is, is the state agency using science and some of these research techniques in their management objectives, but also it gives, uh, you know, graduate students like me a chance to work with Game and & Fish. And again, we're, we're feeding right back into that system, um, and those managers are using some of the best technology, some of the best science in the field today to make some of those management decisions. And it could be weeks, months, years before we move forward to start making decisions on whether to uh, transplant bighorn sheep into the herd unit again.